Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be standing at a crosswalk with a bunch of other people and we're going to be trying to figure out the right time to cross the street. There's going to be different vehicles zooming by like the fire truck and the ambulance, the taxis, uh, even granny on a moped and we're going to be trying to find when is the safe time to go. Today we're going to be talking about Rooster Rush. This is from Mayday Games. It's for three to six players, takes 15 minutes to play, and is ages seven and up. Today we're going to do a rule school. So I am going to teach you how to set up and play the game rule for rule so you don't have to read the rules. So let's get started. Rooster Rush is a family game for three to six players. We're going to be trying to figure out which street is safe to cross. And you're going to be trying to avoid the taxi cab, the ambulance, the fire truck, the police car, and yes, moped granny. Each round, some of the different vehicle tokens will be spun. And during those few tense moments that the tokens are spinning, you're trying to figure out if you think you'll be able to safely cross any of the streets. If so, you'll be the first one to do so. If the street you cross didn't have a token that was face up, you're safe and you'll get to collect points. But if at least one token was face up on the street you tried to cross, you'll have to collect an unsafe card. Three of those and you're out of the game. But if none of the streets would have been safe, you could redeem yourself by pressing the button. You could get rid of bad decisions you made earlier. To set up, first you'll take the red button card and you'll place it face up where everyone can reach in the middle of the table. Next, you'll find all of the crossing cards with the red light side up, as you see here. You'll shuffle all those up to create a crossing deck. You'll then place that next to the red button card. You'll also find the vehicle tokens. There's five of them. There's the police, the taxi, the scooter, the ambulance, and the fire truck. And you'll put them off to the side close to play as well. The object of the game is to have the most points once anybody scores 11 or more points, and you'll do so by safely crossing streets for certain points. The game is played until one player or more has 11 or more points, and each round goes through seven different phases. The first phase is the draw phase. If you're playing with three players, you'll take three cards off the top of this deck and put them out face down. If you're playing with four to six players, you'll take a fourth card from the top of the deck so that there's four cards with the red light side showing. Next, you'll select the vehicle tokens. You'll look at each of the vehicles that are on these cards and you'll make sure that you have those tokens for this round to play. For example, we have a taxi, a fire truck, a scooter, and a fire truck. So we'll wanna make sure that those tokens are here. The other ones that are not on those cards can get taken out and put to the side for this round. So even though we have four cards, we just have three tokens because the fire truck shows up twice. As long as each vehicle is represented by a token, you're okay. Next, you'll flip all of these crossing cards face up. As soon as these cards are revealed, someone counts down three, two, one, go. And the players will simultaneously take these tokens and spin them. Now, the amount of time between when these are flipped and when someone starts counting down should be as fast as possible, unless you're playing with children, and then you can give them five or so seconds to look at the cards before you begin to count down. Now, all of these vehicle tokens are being spun simultaneously, but this is what it looks like when they're being spun. The moment those start spinning, people can try to cross the street by slapping a specific card. If someone else is already there, then you can go to a different card if you like. You're trying to cross that street because you think it's going to be safe. It's safe if that token does not land face up. If when spinning the tokens, any of them fall off the table or didn't get spun correctly, re-spin them all. Now you can cross the street by slapping and leaving your hand on a card, or you can decide to slap and touch, keep your hand on the red button card. If your player slaps a card, another player cannot slap it. They must go somewhere else. Once someone has claimed a card crossing a street by slapping it, they cannot go anywhere else this round. If you don't think any streets are going to be safe, you don't have to slap and cross any of them. If you like, you can wait till all players have finished claiming a card by slapping it before you take your action. Now, some of these cards are tricky. They have sewer caps or chickens or multiple vehicles or vehicles with, diff with grayed out colors. They're just there to trick you. And regardless if the token is its normal color or black and white, it still counts as crossing that street. Once the vehicle token stops spinning, players check and score. Players that have claimed a card, that card will either be safe or unsafe. It's unsafe if any 
of the tokens that are here, regardless of what color they are, are face up from that round spinning. It's safe if none of the token cars that are here are face up. So let's say I had claimed this one. It has a fire truck and just a distraction of a sewer cap. The fire truck did not come up. It was across the street here. So it was safe to cross. And if I had claimed this, I would put it in front of me and that would give me two points. This card is unsafe because this granny scooter is face up. This one is unsafe because even though the taxi was gray, the taxi was face up. This one was safe because it had the fire truck and the uh, distraction of the chicken. So this one was safe. These two were unsafe. If a player had claimed an unsafe card, they place it face down and in front of them. If a player ever gets three unsafe crossing cards, they're immediately eliminated from the game. If it looked like this, meaning all of them were face up, which means every one of these were unsafe and a player pressed the red button, this player would be able to take any unsafe crossing card that they'd collected earlier in the game and remove it from the game. Now, if it looked like this and the fire truck, these two cards were safe because only the fire truck's there and the cross, it was safe and someone pressed the button, then it has no effect. Also, if a player chooses not to claim any card, nothing happens to them this round. Next, you go to cleanup, where essentially any unclaimed crossing cards are discarded from play, and the red button card is placed back. At the end of the round, we check to see if the game ends with a winner. There's multiple ways this can happen. One is if all players have been eliminated except one, that remaining player wins. If one or more player has 11 points, the one with the most points wins. In this case, this player has 12, this player has 11, so this player would win. If two or more players are tied with 11 or more points, here they both have 12, then just the remaining players continue to play another round until there's a winner. If all remaining players are eliminated by getting their third unsaved crossing card, then the results of that round are ignored and play continues as if that round had not occurred. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Rooster Rush without having to open that rule book, read the rules, and figure it out for yourself. Now, if you have more questions about the rules, there'll be a link in the description of this video, and that's the best place to put the questions, because not only will I be notified, but so will the publisher and possibly even the designer to help answer those questions.